How do you do? Um, I'm Graham Murphy, a product manager at Tech Rentals. Today I'm just going to have a look at the Olympus 38 DL. It's an ultrasonic thickness gauge. Now what we're going to look at is measuring the thickness of rubber. Now this gauge normally measures the thickness of steel, it's very simple. We've got an array of transducers in there so we can measure rubber as well as um, the various compounds like for example fiberglass etc. Okay, um, in the kit we've got, um, here's the, the gauge itself, we've got a power supply for recharging, we've got a little bit of couplant, if you're doing a lot you may need more. Um, just as a trick, uh, in the back of the box here is, uh, there's a couple of manuals etc which we'll refer to a little later. Um, and as well as that, this is a, the standard gauge we use for measuring uh, steel etc. It's a twin gauge um, and then we've also got all these other gauges which are uh, rather transducers, sorry, for, for measuring the other materials. Okay, now what we're going to do today is measure the thickness of this rubber. Now this is a piece of conveyor belt. I've turned around, I measure the thickness. Um, you'd normally do it with calipers or whatever. It's a 20 mil piece. Now, first thing I've got to do is work out which transducer to use. Now, this is a document which is in the lid of the box. When you look through this document, you'll find there's various materials listed and it tells you which particular transducer. In this case, we're using the M1036 because we can do 20 to 35 mil thick rubber. The M1036 needs to be in HP mode. So I now have to find the M1036 amongst the, amongst the transducers. Okay, so in here, now I pull this out and written on the top here is the fact that this is the, it's a bit hard to see, it's the M1036, is it? Yes, M1036. We've got a whole heap of other transducers in there for different applications. So I've got to now grab the cable, the appropriate cable out of there, pull this part off. Etc. Now, first thing I'll do, ah, oh, that's the wrong cable. I need the cable, this cable here. So I will now connect this up to the instrument. Now, there's a couple of inputs on the instrument. You select the right hand one when you're using a single transducer. There we go, down there. Now, Put this material on. Now I need to now run the instrument up. Okay, I push the on off button. The instrument switch is on. Now I've got to recall the correct transducer, the M1036. Now I hit press transducer recall because there are some default transducers loaded. Now if I push the arrow down here, I can see the fact that there's default single element and default HP, now high, high power elements. Now if you remember when we looked it up, it needed the high power um, element. Now when we go enter on high power, we can see that there is no M1036 there. Bit annoying. So if you press transducer recall, bring this up again and we'll go if we go single element without the high power and we go enter on that, you can see that there the M1036 is a 2.25 megahertz. So I'm going to select transducer recall. I'm going to select this one here. There is a 2.25, it's the V154. So I'm going to come down to here and I press enter to select that. Mode one is correct. Now if we push the enter key, enter key, enter key, now I'm on the probe type. Now it says V154, we've got a different element here. So I just push the left arrow and there's the one M1036, which is the one. Now I push enter here. Now, this is critical. We need to put in an approximate velocity for rubber. Now, I Googled it. 
you Google whatever material you're using. Now, it happens to be around 1830. Now, that's not exactly right, but it helps you work out what's going on because I'm gonna set this at 1830. All right, that's our approximately approximate sound speed of rubber. We will set this correctly later. E exactly, you know, what it is. Anyway, I go enter, 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 etc. Now, so that's entered all those values. Now, if I hit the measure key, it brings this up. Now, it doesn't help us. Now, one of the next thing I've got to do is do a zero cal. Okay, now I've exited from there. I've hit the measure key. Now I hit section, second function, cal zero. Now I've got to do the zero cal on this. So I press, now press measure, which does the zero cal. Now, the next stage is the fact that I now put couplant on the um, rubber, a little thumbnail worth, and I put the transducer on the piece of rubber. Now it's sitting on the couplant. Now, we can't see any signal at the moment. There is no signal. Now, one of the problems we've got here is the fact that we're looking at zero to 10 millimeters. Now this is an approximate thickness at that sound speed. So I need to now, that says 10, it might be a bit hard to see. Now I need to hit the range button here and change this up so it says 50. Now the critical signals we'll be looking for will be signals which are in about this range here. So, what I need to do is I've got to turn around and get this now, the signal, it's, I've got to try and find the signals which are the appropriate signals for this. Okay, you can see some little green bits here. They're very faint, but that's the signal we're looking at anyway. It's, we don't know how this thing's been configured, so I'm just gonna grab, if I hit waveform adjust, now, there's mode one. Now, as you push the down arrow, you can jump through the things you can change. Now, if we put, we come down here, uh, there's the maximum gain. Now, if I turn around and push the right arrow, I will increase that maximum gain and you'll see a signal start to appear. Right, now, the signal we're interested in will be the one at approximately 20 millimeters, which is 10 it's probably this signal here. That's probably the signal from the far side of the, uh, the rubber, okay? So I'm going to turn around. I need to amplify that. Now we do that by adjusting the initial gain and the slope. Now this is a little bit of magic. You've just got to pick values that work, that don't show these, that show that. Now the maximum gain we've set at 57 dB. Now I'm just going to turn around and the next I'll put the down arrow uh, the initial gain, if you have a look at that, if we turn around, oops, hang on, I hit the up and down arrow instead of maximum gain. Initial gain, now if you adjust that, well that only amplifies the early stuff, that's no good. So I'm just gonna bring that back down, arrow down. Now the slope, what happens if we change the slope? Now I hit the right arrow here. Now it's making it more vertical. Now you can see the slope changing there. Gee, oop, hang on, I went too far. Here we come back a bit. When we come back here, lo and behold, we're starting to see nice and clearly that signal that we're interested in. So I'm going to come back again up to the maximum gain. Now I hit right angle right there and crank it a little bit and there. Oh, hang on, right. So that signal is actually a 24 0.54, so that's good. That's set it for this. And as we move it around the place, you find it'll change. Now, that's, as I said, we, we measured this and it was not 24.52, it was, the thickness was 20. So now the next thing I've got to do is push Cal Velocity, which is a little button down here. I put Cal Velocity. Now, if we push um, enter, that holds it, and now I can use the left and right arrows to set this 
to 20 millimeters. Now that is adjusting the actual velocity. We set 1830, it isn't actually that, it's another figure. So if I now select measure, that will be the done. And guess what? There we have our 20 millimeter thickness. And as we move around, we can check the thickness of the rubber if we're try trying to um, confirm where we've got thin spots, etc. So we've now set up and we've configured the 38DL to measure the thickness of this rubber piece.